what her name was, she'd say Carson with a K. <laughs> so she's Carson with a K. And uh, I have asked her to bless the food. Dear Lord, I ask you to nourish this food into our body and let us have a swell day. Lord, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I want to take this opportunity to uh, express my gratitude to uh, Sue Tibbs for extending this invitation and to come and to say a few words uh, to you. And uh, this is a, a way to say thank you. And so I have prepared a few words for you. So at least I hope you can uh, be attentive and digest what's in my heart to say to you today. Our Saint Elijah expressed our thanks to you and for this uh, coming for this devotional uh, luncheon and this invitation of breaking bread together and thanks the, to the young lady who offered the devotion today. We are grateful for the opportunity to say thank you uh, for the service you give to the citizens of the state of Oklahoma. I came to this blessed land in 1961 from a village named Taibi, which means pleasant, on the West Bank. Taibi is known in the Bible as Ephraim and is recorded in the Gospel of John 1154 that after Christ raised Lazarus from the dead, he withdrew with his disciples to this village Ephraim. And that's where my family is since 1628. My father, who was an eighth generation priest, that make me ninth generation, from Palestine. I'm a Palestinian Arab Christian. My father came to the United States in 1954. He was sponsored by the Orthodox Christians, Methodists, and Lutheran missionaries in Palestine. He came to the United States to raise money for the Palestinian people who were expelled from their homeland during the Arab-Israeli war. More than 450 villages were destroyed and eradicated from the face of the earth. Over one million people were displaced, Palestinians. The conflict in the Middle East has led to wars, suffering and isolation of villages, separations of families, the constructions of walls higher than Berlin Wall, and the imprisonment of almost three million people today, the Palestinian people on the West Bank and Gaza. More than 60 years of war, and more than 60 years, there is no resolution to the conflict. And I pray to the Almighty God that we can pray, continue to pray for our administration and our representatives here and in the United States to work toward peace in that tragic and stable region. I mention this in order to remind us that is why people in the world who want to be free have come to this blessed land of America. It is no different today than it was for your forefathers and past generations who came to this country seeking political freedom and economic opportunity. The majority of the inhabited world view the United States as a paradise, quote, unquote. Paradise. 
Our founding fathers struggled to create for us a nation dedicated to life, liberty, and justice for all. I have been blessed, nurtured, and encouraged first as a student in Omaha, Nebraska, and Iona College in Rochelle, New York, and St. Vladimir's Theological Seminary in Rochelle, New York, by teachers, professors, and colleagues across rational, national people from all walks of life. I was introduced through my study as a major in history and minor in philosophy to the lives of George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Abraham Lincoln, and others who fought the good fight and paid the full measure of devotion that this nation might be free. However, over the last couple of decades, it has been tragic and unfathomable to see a nation that was built on faith and trust in God become godless. We are now a nation where three out of four marriages end in divorce. We are a nation where God's house is now divided into more than 33,000 different groups and denominations with each preaching their own understanding who God is. Education is in great decline and many students fear going to school. And it is sad to say that our state and local governments often create ways to accommodate current fades and trends while abandoning the spirit of our founding fathers. I recently came across an article on George Washington. Excuse me. My bag. The article was written by one of the early Arab bishops that came to America at the first early 1900. He wrote the article in Arabic because most of the Arabic immigrants had not yet learned to read English. He wanted to educate the Middle Eastern reader about the history and lives of the founding fathers of this country. He wrote about George Washington's parents, Augustine and Mary Washington. Mary taught her son George how to pray, and they prayed together every night kneeling and lifting their hands unto the Lord. This training by his mother impacted George Washington's life to love and to serve God faithfully. Read about him. Throughout his life, George Washington remained a man of prayer, praying daily. The painting we have of Washington during the trying winter at Valley Forge shows Washington kneeling in prayer. Regarding the importance of individual faith of our country, George Washington said, and read about him, once we stop praying and asking God for forgiveness. Once we ignore his eternal power as a creator and God, we will lose our moral ethics and begin to decline and the nation will be divided. This bishop named Emmanuel wanted the Middle Eastern people to understand and to embrace the godly heritage 
of the founders of this country. He thought this was so important that he could not wait until the immigrants had learned English. He wanted to teach them. For he wrote his article in Arabic, so these first generation Middle Easterners would understand the importance of their Christian faith in the founding of this country.